Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about why your metahumans suck. This is because throughout the year, I've been learning a lot about how to render metahuman, uh, about animation, about its textures, and I want to implement all of this in my short film, and I just want to share it with everybody. So let's get started. Reason number one, you are using generic metahumans. I see a lot of people use the generic preset and they're awesome for testing, but I really think that the tweaks are there for everyone to use them. And I would recommend something like Mesh to MetaHuman now that it's available. Uh, you can use the photo thing that I did on my channel, or you can just scan yourself, scan your friends, um, whoever, scan your actors, and then make them as a MetaHuman because that's going to make you um, that's going to give you a better looking metahuman, something that strays out of the mold. And it's just not the default metahuman that you see all the time in, in several videos. So this is why for my coming short film and for everything that I do, I'll be using master metahuman. I use a blender software to wrap things from pictures and kind of make my metahumans look a little bit better. Actually, this metahuman right here, the one that I'm going to use in my coming short film, is from a sculpt so something that i got out of zbrush and then i put it into mesh metahuman and that's how i got this character called nail rim that i want to use my common short film so if you can use zbrush uh like myself you're a 3d artist then it's a great tool if not then there's other options for people that are not 3d artists like the blender tool that i used on my channel there's also uh 3d scans that you can just scan your face and put them into mesh to metahumans and if you're interested in that then i have uh, several tutorials on my channel some of them will be linked down below reason number two you are using the default texture and this has to do a little bit with reason number one because when you use mesh to metahuman then and you add the skin texture you get the same texture all the time and that preset is i think set to like the youngest less imperfection uh, of all the textures that you can select in the metahuman uh, creator. So this will give you a very fake, very uh, game looking, cartoony looking character. So everybody has imperfections on their face, even if you see a lot of people using Instagram, Photoshop, whatever, to hide the imperfections. If you want your metahumans to look more realistic, then you're going to have to bring those imperfections in there in the form of uh, texture. So just scroll a little bit through the MetaHuman Creator textures until you get some imperfections, especially on the skin when you're going to do reflections with lighting and all that. If you're going to do any types of close-up, it's better that you have a, a little bit more imperfections than not. That's why usually when you see the better um, animated humans are usually on the older side because the more imperfections you have, the more realistic looking the character is. Now the other, and this is part of two, the other thing is modifying your textures a little bit because um, sometimes the kind of lighting that you have in MetaHuman Creator is not the lighting that you're going to have in your final render or in your environment or your video game or whatever you want. So in order to get more realistic MetaHumans, you have to adapt the skin to that sort of approximation of light that you're gonna have in your environment. And I also did some tweaks to this. If you want to watch when I did the Iron Man UI tutorial, um, you can also see me doing some tweaks to the skin preset just to get something a little bit more realistic because again, you don't have the same lighting in MetaHuman Creator that you're going to have um, when you have your character in real. Now, number three has got to do with lighting. And that means you are not lighting for uh, cinematic purposes. If you're lighting, like you would light in a video game. And I'm saying this because I used to do this. You're going to get a video game looking character. You're going to get a somewhat cartoony looking character. And that is because you need to light like you were lighting for a cinema or a photograph of a real person. So that means you need to tweak, uh, add a little bit of lighting, not just use whatever environment light. No, it doesn't look natural. It, it just looks like a video game. It doesn't look good. And even if you are making a video game, if you're making video game cinematic, you can actually see from AAA cinematics that there's a big difference between 
the cinematics that they make and the in-game cinematics that are made with wherever your character stands. So having a very specific lighting for the environment and the moment is very important. Now, the other thing that I've seen in some short films is, and I've done it as well, is using the sunlight as your actual light. This actually produced really bad results. And usually people think that, well, that's how they light people in the real world. You know, if you're outside, then you just get outside light. And while that is correct for the real world, that's not good for Unreal because sometimes the sunlight, even though we have lumen, we have global illumination, sometimes that illumination is not enough into producing those great shadows, uh, those great reflections that you sometimes need to convey realism with your metahumans. So even if you're doing an outside shot, I would highly recommend that you get a little bit of studio lighting there at some red lights. I'm actually going to do another tutorial on metahuman lighting, um, being more specific to this sort of situation, because if you're doing interiors and you usually use very particular lighting situations, you add lighting to the person, but Sometimes when people have characters outside, they think, okay, I don't need to add this. And you, and you do, because this isn't real life. This is a game engine and you need to enhance your character with lighting as much as you can. Now, reason number four is a little bit longer than the other ones. And that has to do with you having to modify the raw data that you get from your motion capture suit or from your face um, animation solution. So whether you're using Facewear, Facegood, the iPhone, or anything else I haven't mentioned, there's so many nowadays. Here's the thing, a lot of people uh, ask me and DM me on Twitter and on Discord asking me like, what is the best for facial mocap? What is the best for um, mocap suit? Actually, I talked a little bit about the difference between accents and perception neuron, why I chose perception neuron instead of accents. But in the end, the one that you can afford is going to be the best. And the reason being is you always, always need to process that data. It doesn't matter if the motion capture suit that you selected has an AI that cleans up the data. There's always some animation input that you as the person animating that character need to give. So there's always a extra step in that process. It's not like, okay, I recorded my motion capture and I'm done. And I used to do that. And that's why I wonder like why my animations are not looking great. And that was the reason. The reason was because I was just getting the motion capture data, putting it and render it. And that is not how Hollywood does it. That is not how high-end studio do it. Uh, even when using Unreal, most of them have animators that go and do retouch of the animation. So even like there's a big difference between inertia and optical um, motion capture. But whether you're using $50,000 Viacom system or you're using something like Perception Neuron, which is very affordable, then you still have to clean up. Then you still have to go through the animation process. And I'm going to sh actually show that in a coming tutorial, so stay tuned for that. But I think it's really important, unless you're doing something like a VTuber situation, then that's totally different, uh, like, you know, uh, Code Meek or something like that. That That's just real time. There's no way to do any retouching. And, and one of the reasons why I'm making so much emphasis on this part is because people keep asking me, well, if I buy this system, then it will look better. If I spend this much money, it will look better. No, it won't. If you don't do any after work, it won't look as great as the Hollywood things or the movie things or even what you see in Love, Dead and Robots because that's all, uh, I think, Blur Studios and those guys, uh, they have an army of animators. They usually go through that motion capture data and make it look amazing. So you, there isn't one equipment that you can buy that's going to give you that Hollywood grade animation. Don't waste your money like that. Just get the one that you can afford and do that extra work. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you next year.